Paramount's favorite writer, Taylor Sheridan, is back with another thrilling drama, Special Ops, Lioness. The espionage series revolves around a CIA operative named Joe, who is part of a special operation called Lioness. It is a classified program that recruits women as soldiers to infiltrate a target's closed network. The operatives are tasked with locating and befriending the wives, girlfriends, or sisters of high-value targets and killing them to finish the mission. The CIA had been running the Lioness program in Syria to eliminate ISIS leaders, who had become a fatal threat to American soldiers in the Middle East. Special Ops, Lioness Episode 1 mainly focuses on a new recruit named Cruz Manuelos, who joins the Marines after being assaulted by her boyfriend. The narrative focuses on Manuelos's backstory until she finally comes across Joe, who appoints her for the Lioness Project. So, without any further ado, let's explore what happened in the first episode and how it will lead to the events of the second one. The Americans have been fighting the Middle Eastern War on different fronts. Special Ops, Lioness follows the CIA's secret operations conducted to quietly eliminate the target without much collateral damage. However, as we enter the first episode, we find out that one of Joe's operatives in Cobain, Syria, has accidentally blown her cover. Joe and her team were waiting 17 kilometers away from the ISIS outpost for Isabel's signal to extract her. Inside the enemy base, Isabel hides under the floor of one of the houses and connects with Joe, who reveals to her that her target has seen the cross tattoo on her ribs. In the radical Muslim community, getting any such tattoo is forbidden, especially if it is a symbol belonging to another religion. Joe and her team prepare to extract Isabel from the enemy camp before ISIS kills her, however, near the outpost, an explosive cord is detonated, thereby creating a diversion and confusion. In the end, Joe is left with no other option but to call in a drone strike to bomb the entire camp, killing all the ISIS members along with her own operative. She didn't want Isabel to suffer at the hands of ISIS, or they would have filmed her in the most inhumane way possible and made a demonstration of making her life a living hell. The first episode of Special Ops, Lioness moves back four years, where we come across a woman named Cruz Manuelos. When we first met Manuelos, she used to flip burgers in a joint in Oklahoma City, trying to earn an ethical living. She had lost her mother in junior high and never knew her father. After her mother's death, she had no real family to rely on and thus, lost her way. She perhaps became a stripper for the time being but didn't really want to make money through such means. However, during her job as a dancer, she met the most toxic guy of her life. Her boyfriend had given her a roof to live under in exchange for her peace and sanity. He would try to tame her and even assault her if she refused to follow his orders. But Manuelos had enough. She fought back and hit her boyfriend with a frying pan. While running away from him, Manuelos ended up in a marine recruiting office, where an officer not only protected her from her abuser but also showed her a new path to follow. Manuelos decided to sit through the military recruitment examination and ended up passing her aptitude test with flying colors. Even her physical assessment had been quite remarkable. Manuelos's performance in both physical and theoretical tests couldn't be ignored, which is why her superior stated that she could become one of those armed personnel who could make a difference. He hinted at the fact that she was made for the Marines, which means she wouldn't be able to have a steady life in the real world. Manuelos assured him that she had no real life so far and perhaps wouldn't have any outside the military. The scene implies that maybe Manuelos will develop some personal connections in the upcoming episode that are going to create some conflict in her military career. We saw a similar dilemma in Joe's case, who was not able to spend time with her family because of her job in the CIA. She had become distant from her kids, and they grew resentful, but there was nothing she could do to fix that. For a CIA operative, the country comes first. After Isabel's death, the head of the operation, Byron Westfield, briefs Joe to find a new recruit and commands her to make sure to check the tattoos beforehand. She ends up in Bragg, where she finds out about Manuelos, a woman from Mexico with a Syrian father and a Mexican mother. According to the briefing officer, Jack, Manuelos is well versed in Arabic, which makes her the perfect fit for the lioness program. And her past experiences increase her chances of getting recruited as a CIA operative. Joe had been quite unsure about Manuelos until she finally met her. In Manuelos, Joe saw a fighter who was willing to go to any lengths to finish the missions, and that's all she wanted. After a heated tattoo check, Joe didn't waste a moment to brief Manuelos about the special program and what her role would be in it. They soon boarded a flight to Kuwait City to introduce Manuelos to the rest of the team. During the flight, Joe briefs Manuelos about their first target, Asmar Ali Amrohai, an important member of ISIS in Iraq. Joe informs Manuelos that her mission will be to befriend Asmar Ali's daughter, Aliyah, 
in order to get close to the target. According to the intel, Aliyah is young and likes to spend her father's money. In Kuwait, Manuelos takes the identity of Zara Adid, who is a Muslim woman born in Boston, while her parents originally belonged to Abu Dhabi. She has come to Kuwait during her semester off and is currently staying with her uncle. With the information nicely fed to Manuelos, Joe quickly sends her to the battlefield to befriend Aliyah. Manuelos finds Aliyah in one of the jewelry shops in the Salhia market and strikes up a conversation with her by complimenting a necklace that she is eyeing. The two get along pretty quickly while Aliyah invites her to the Estee Lauder showroom across the street. With a band of bodyguards escorting Aliyah, Manuelos is finally able to infiltrate the first security parameter, and from here on, she will have to get close to Asmar Ali to kill him. However, as we have already witnessed in Isabel's case, it won't be an easy mission, and Manuelos's safety is highly questionable. If any such dangerous circumstance were to arise, would Joe be able to save her new operative? Hopefully, the upcoming episode will give us the answer. We witnessed the potential that Cruz had in the very first episode of Special Ops, Lioness, and we had no doubt that she was going to be an exceptional agent. It wouldn't be wrong if we said that Cruz was gifted, and she was better than most, but still, Joe wanted to test her limits and know how much she was able to take in before reaching her breaking point. Joe knew that it was not something that was done quite often, but still, this time she wanted to be sure what kind of person she was dealing with. Joe wanted the odds to be in her favor, but she also knew that the risk was huge. So, let's find out what happened in the second episode of Special Ops, Lioness between Joe and Cruz. Joe knew that a lot of times, she took her family for granted and wasn't able to be with them as much as she should. As a result, her daughter Kate had become a different person altogether, and she had grown to despise Joe. Joe knew about it, and as much as she wanted to change the equation she had with her daughter, she didn't have the bandwidth to do that. Cruz Manuelos had been introduced to Aaliyah, and Joe knew that now they had to amp up their game and get a step ahead of the ISIS leaders. Joe met Caitlin Mead and told her that she wanted to put Cruz on the grinder. Caitlin didn't understand what Joe was up to, and he told her that Cruz had already been through the Survival Evasion Resistance Escape SEER, training program. But Joe was of the opinion that the kind of mission Cruz was going to undertake required her to be strong from within. Joe knew that the ISIS leaders would subject her to the kind of brutality that she had never imagined in her life. More than her body, her spirit needed to be strong, and Joe wanted to prepare her for that. Joe knew that Cruz would hate her for life if she was made to face such torture in her training, but she still wanted to go head on with it. Caitlin told her that Cruz was her operative, and she was free to do whatever she deemed to be the best course of action. Joe went back to her house to find that her daughter Kate had said some very mean things to Neil, who was having a tough time. Earlier that day at work, Neil had to tell a small girl's parents that her tumor had metastasized and that the chances of her making it through were negligible. Neil had to tell her parents that if he were in their place, he wouldn't go ahead with the treatment because it was extremely painful. The father had lost his temper and assaulted Neil. Neil felt guilty. He couldn't imagine how life could be so unfair. He couldn't do anything about it but being in that helpless situation agitated him. Neil got a call from Kate's school that she had been in a fight, and he had to go and pick her up. Kate went to the extent of saying that Neil wouldn't understand anything considering he was a white man. Neil felt really hurt, and he took Kate's phone and asked her to go sit quietly in her bedroom and contemplate what she had done. Joe came back to her house and found Neil in a miserable condition. Dealing with teenagers is hard, but Joe knew that Neil needed her support. She went and talked to Kate and gave her a reality check. She told her how privileged she was and how she had hurt her father. Joe knew that making her daughter understand anything was going to be an uphill task, but she couldn't shy away from her responsibilities. Both Joe and Neil had extremely hectic lives, and probably that was one of the reasons that made parenting even more difficult for them. They had professional obligations, and amidst all that, they were not able to spend some quality time together. Cruz Manuelos had this belief that she was unbreakable, and Joe in Special Ops, Lioness Episode 2 wanted to break her illusion. Joe was very well aware of the fact that Cruz would start considering her an enemy if she went ahead with her plan, but Joe was fine with it. She knew that making her an enemy was much better than losing her on the battlefield and then regretting not knowing her limits. Joe wanted to conduct a very risky experiment where she wanted to see for herself the extent to which Cruz was capable of going. Cruz was a restless soul, and after she woke up early in the morning, she just wanted a way to spend all her energy. She decided to go for a run when she was kidnapped and taken to an unknown location on a ship. Cruz was put through torture, and she had no clue what was happening to her for the longest time. After being tortured for a while, she was given clothes to wear, and Joe came to talk to her. That's when Cruz got to know that it was all a training program. 
Obviously, Cruz was infuriated, and at that moment, if her hands were not tied and she had the energy, she would have killed each and every operative present there. Joe told her up front that she was not done with her yet, as she still wanted to shatter her pride and make her ready for what she was about to face in the future. After really testing her limits, Joe dropped Cruz off at Fort Bragg, where she was supposed to stay with her team. Seeing Cruz in that state, even Bob and others were surprised. When Bobby got to know that it was not the usual staff training program, she got agitated. She took everybody to the bar so that they could teach those guys a lesson. Bobby, Cruz, Toes Cups, and others entered into a brawl with the people who had tortured Cruz, and they were a bit taken aback when they got to know that it was Joe who had ordered it. Meanwhile, Cruz got a call from Aaliyah, who told her that she was in Atlanta and was flying to Chesapeake, Virginia, the next day. Aaliyah called Cruz to come along, and she obviously agreed. It would be interesting to see what happens when Cruz finally meets Asmar Ali Amrohai and if she is able to get into their inner circle and win his trust, as she did with Aaliyah. Joe was having a hard time maintaining a balance between her professional and private life, the problem was that Neil and Kate had learned to live without her. She walked in on Kate when she was sharing a very intimate moment with a boy. Joe reacted in an extreme manner, and she called the mother of the boy and told her that her son was with her daughter. The boy ran out of the house in embarrassment, and a disappointed Kate went up to her bedroom. Kate told Joe up front not to tell her how to live her life because she didn't like that. Joe probably could have dealt with the situation a little more maturely and not let her anger determine things. But now the damage had been done, and Kate despised her even more. Joe went to talk to Neil, and she got to know that he already knew about it. Neil had talked to Kate about all these things, and they had decided to set a boundary beyond which Kate wouldn't go as of now. Neil knew that he could not stop his children from being with boys at that age, and so he had reached a sort of agreement with them. Joe wanted to have a conversation with Neil and spend some quality time with him, but he was on a Zoom call and didn't have the time. Time was a luxury for both Joe and Neil, and it had become the reason why their family had started falling apart. They loved each other, but not being able to spend any time together was creating issues, especially for the kids. Kate needed her parents, and their absence was impacting her mental health. She had become a very different person, and Joe's strict measures were not helping her cause. Kyle needs Joe's help to extract a prisoner. She knew that there would come a time when she would need his help. The extraction of a prisoner by Kyle with some borrowed manpower from Joe was successful, and we will have to see in the upcoming episodes if it is somewhat connected to the ongoing case or not. Meanwhile, Cruz was called to Chesapeake, where Aaliyah was staying with her partner, Esan, and a few other friends. Cruz and Joe both knew that this was a big step and that things were moving rather quickly. Joe asked Cruz to throw the burner phone when she was about to reach the mansion where Aaliyah was staying, and she gave her all the details she needed to know before going there. Joe was pretty confident about the entire mission, even though things were moving more quickly than she had expected them to, mainly because she knew that Cruz had the potential to pull it off. Joe had put Cruz through a lot of torture so that she would get an idea of how much she was able to take before she broke. Cruz was obviously angry at Joe because there was no part of her body that was not bruised. Those bruises caused a lot of trouble for her when she reached Aaliyah's paradise. Aaliyah called a doctor when she saw those marks on her body, and Joe didn't know at that moment if Cruz would be able to handle the situation and not blow her cover. The doctor came, and he told Cruz that he was obligated to inform the authorities as it was a case of domestic abuse, but Cruz handled the situation tactfully and told him that she had already complained, and the perpetrator had been caught. She played the sympathy card in front of the doctor and told him that she really needed some friends in life and that she wanted him to tell Aaliyah that she was absolutely fine. The doctor did exactly that, and Joe and her entire team were pleasantly surprised with the way Cruz had dealt with the entire facade. Cruz had recording devices on her, through which Joe was able to hear everything firsthand. Then something happened that neither Joe nor Cruz were prepared for. One of Aaliyah's friends, Sammy, tried to molest Cruz, but she defended herself, and then security came and intervened. The next day, Aaliyah and Esan decided to take the party to another city altogether, and they wanted to keep it a surprise, so Cruz had no clue where they were going. As soon as Joe got to know about it, she immediately went to the private airport from where they were boarding the flight, and at the very last moment, Joe's team owners were able to note down the flight number. We will get to know what kind of challenges Cruz faces in her covert operation and if Joe is able to get more information on Asmar Ali Amrohai. Kate was in a car with her friends when she met with a terrible accident, and one of the girls lost her life. Kate had several fractures, and she was immediately taken to the same hospital where her father, Neil, worked. Neil was in the middle of surgery when he was informed about his daughter, and in a state of paranoia, he left the operation theater and rushed to the portico where the ambulances were lined up. 
Neil waited outside the operation theater while his colleagues made sure that Kate survived. Neil was relieved when he heard that his daughter was out of danger. But there was another thing that his fellow doctor made him aware of, he said that Kate was pregnant, and if the fetus hadn't already died because of the shock, then Kate would have a huge decision to make for herself. Kate was merely 14 years old, and Neil didn't know what he should tell her, but he knew that getting angry and scolding Kate wouldn't solve the problem. This problem was much bigger, and Neil had finally accepted the fact that somewhere he had failed as a parent. Kate was having mental health issues, and it was very evident through the kind of conflicts we saw her having with her mother. Jill was on a mission, keeping an eye on Cruz when she got the news of Kate's accident. As if getting to know that her daughter was in an accident was not traumatizing enough for her. Joe told Neil that she would come over the next day and be there with him. Joe didn't know what she should do or how she should maintain a balance between her personal and professional lives. She told Neil that they had both sacrificed their children and traded them for their professions. Neil was a very sensible man, and he agreed that he needed to mend quite a lot of things as everything was indeed falling apart. The extraction mission for which Kyle had asked for Joe's men was a success, but the pictures of the men were captured by the camera. Caitlin Mead and Byron Westfield knew that they would have to cover up the damage before it became a huge national issue. Kyle was called for questioning and asked what he was up to. The surveillance camera footage clearly showed that he was the one who was driving the car, and Mead told him that if things went like this then very soon he would become the first guy from the CIA to be on the FBI's most wanted list. That's when Kyle told them that the operative they were trying to extract was his informant inside the Sinaloa cartel, and he was going to bring five terrorists from Al-Qaeda next week. Meade got interested the moment she heard about Al-Qaeda and asked him if he had any proof of what he was saying. Kyle assured her and Byron that he could get them the evidence if that's what they wanted. Byron knew that they didn't want to come under the scrutiny of the FBI, so they told Kyle to act fast and make it happen quickly. Kyle called Joe and told her that Meade knew that it was her men who had helped him in the extraction. Joe was extremely mad at him because, firstly, he had not informed her that it was going to be such a dangerous mission and that by sending her men, she was actually putting their lives at risk, and secondly, he had promised her that none of this would blow out of proportion. But now the damage had been done, and Meade called Joe and told her that she was coming to meet her personally. Cruz was taken to East Hampton, Long Island, and Joe's gang had followed her up there. Bobby was on the beach while the rest of the team was on a yacht in the middle of the ocean, keeping an eye on her. They got to know that Aaliyah was soon to be married to Esan al Rashidi, and they also spotted his brother trying to make a move on every other woman sitting on the beach. What Joe and her gang didn't understand was why the royal family of Saudi Arabia was getting their son married to the daughter of a Kuwaiti terrorist. Joe knew that these kinds of marriages were always arranged, and that is why she knew that there was something that she was missing out on, as the royal family wouldn't do this without any sort of incentive. Aliyah and her gang went to a party in the night, and because no one from Joe's team was willing to go inside the party and keep an eye on her, she took over that responsibility. Joe was at the bar when a fight broke out, and she got distracted. When she couldn't find Cruz anywhere she informed her team to step in and search her. A man had been flirting with Cruz, and he had spiked her drink and once she started losing control of her senses, he took her to the middle of the forest to take advantage of her. Before the man could do anything, Joe and her gang arrived at the spot, and they taught the guy a lesson. Joe mercilessly beat him, taking out all her frustration on him, and left him there after giving him a warning that if he even tried to tell the police anything about the assault, they would find and kill him. At the end of episode 4, Mead came to meet Joe and asked her how she could presume that Cruz would be able to carry out the mission successfully once they went to the Middle East when in reality, she was not able to handle a couple of days in their own country. But Cruz was resilient, and Joe knew that even if she was not, they had never gotten an operative in such close proximity to a target. Joe told Mead that they didn't have any option other than to hope that the odds favor them. Cruz was in a miserable state, but she was still determined to go back because she felt this incessant need to prove her worth. She told Joe that Aaliyah's wedding venue was most probably going to be Dubai since she wanted it to happen there, and generally, her wishes were always fulfilled. Cruz had recovered, and she was ready to go back to the field, but before that, there was Kyle's mess that had to be handled, in which Joe was also now entangled. So, let's find out what happened in Special Ops, Lioness Episode 5. Joe finally reached the hospital, and she immediately went to have a word with Kate. Joe knew that she could not get angry or tell Kate that she had committed the biggest mistake of her life, as that was not going to help her cause. Joe told that she knew that she hadn't been there for her and that her work was taking a toll on her personal life. As much as she wanted to be around and spend time with her kids as Neil did, she couldn't because she had a field job. She too had gotten accidentally pregnant back in the day, 
and Kate got really shocked to hear that, as up until then, she didn't believe that her mother was capable of committing such mistakes. But Joe assured her that she understood where Kate's rebellion was coming from, and she told her that there was nothing wrong with it. She requested that Kate not punish herself because of the actions of her parents. She told her that, as much as she understood where her anger was stemming from, she couldn't see her ruining her life like this. She knew that Kate was better than this, and this newfound arrogance and brash behavior was a repercussion of feeling abandoned by her mother. Kate broke down as she knew the blunder she had committed, and Joe saw how emotionally wrecked that little girl was feeling. Joe told her that she knew about whatever had happened and also informed her that she was not pregnant. Joe said that she would try to balance her personal and professional lives, but they had to rekindle the bond that they had shared. Kate, after a long time, also had a genuine conversation with her mother without scorning her or losing her temper. Kate felt like someone had lifted a heavy weight from her shoulders. Those tears rolling down her cheeks were evidence of the kind of catharsis she was going through. Joe went out and told Neil that she would be gone for a couple of days, and Neil was clearly not happy with it. The man had been patient for years, but he was losing it. He didn't have his companion around him when he needed her the most, and he had no clue where his marriage was going. When Joe went inside, Caitlin told Neil that he shouldn't give up on Joe and should bear with him for a little longer as things would be fine. Neil said that he could never imagine doing that because whenever Joe walked in, he still had the same feeling as when he had seen her for the first time. Later, Caitlin gave Joe the option of getting her transferred to a position where she would be able to give more time to her family, but Joe knew that it was not the solution. Joe was happy about one thing, at least she had a good talk with her daughter, and years later, it felt like they finally understood each other. Kyle and Joe came for a briefing at the CIA headquarters, and they met Byron Westfield there. Westfield told them that the damage had been done and that the only way out of this mess was to succeed in the mission and capture the terrorists. Westfield scolded Kyle for going out of line and said that he was lucky that he was getting a chance to rectify his mistakes. After Kyle left, he also had a word with Joe and told her that she was way out of line when she sent her men to assist Kyle in his mission without taking any sort of permission from his seniors. Westfield told her that at that time, he was letting it go, but if it happened again, he would make sure that she paid for her actions. Joe went to her team and started preparing for the mission when she saw that Cruz was also present there with everybody. She asked Bobby why she had brought her along when she knew that she was an asset and that if her cover got blown, then their entire mission would be hampered. Cruz had been in a similar situation, and Bobby had thought that her experience might be of use to them, which is why she had brought her with the team. Joe asked Bobby to keep Cruz at the very end because she didn't want Aaliyah to learn about Cruz's real identity. There were cameras installed in a safe house, and Kyle and others got to know that the terrorists had bombs with them and were probably planning to attack any time now. After the discovery of the bombs, the directives changed, and the team was told to execute everybody present there before they killed anybody. The local task force was told to be on high alert and evacuate the entire area once Joe's team had killed the terrorist. Joe went inside with her team, and Cruz's experience did come to be of good use, and she proved her worth, something that she had been aching to do since she came aboard. Cruz always felt that Joe didn't have faith in her abilities, and she wanted to change that perception. After the mission was a success, Cruz finally decided to establish contact with Aaliyah, and she told her everything like Caitlin had said but didn't mention the names of the people who were involved. Aaliyah felt guilty for leaving Cruz out there and not being able to help her. The ploy worked, and now Aaliyah was feeling even more sympathetic towards her. Joe had placed all her bets on Cruz, and she knew that this ploy of hers had to work anyway. Joe had been trying to mend whatever she could since the beginning of the story, but she felt exhausted at times because, at the end of the day, she was also a human. From her family life to the multiple professional crises that came her way, it was all getting a bit overwhelming for her. At times her actions made her guilty, at times sad, and at times extremely frustrated. Every day she encountered new obstacles, but she kept on moving forward as she knew that victory was just around the corner and things would be better after that. Joe, Caitlin, and Byron knew that the extraction and the Santa Monica mission were going to create problems for them, and they were mentally prepared. Cruz was all set to go to East Hampton, Long Island, and meet Aaliyah once again. Caitlin's husband, Errol Mead, was an influential man, and he not only understood the system well but was well connected. Caitlin was called to the White House for an urgent meeting, and she wanted to know what she should expect. Both Caitlin and Errol were very particular when it came to their professional lives, and a lot of the time, even after staying in the same house, they concealed information from each other because such was the nature of their work. But this time, Errol told Caitlin that Secretary of State Edwin Mullins had cancelled his trip to Poland. 
Caitlin knew that this time, they had crossed the line and that they wouldn't be able to get off so easily. Caitlin also told her husband that they were in touch with a mole in Cadre Petrol, but the surprising aspect was that they were not the ones who had placed him there. This mole worked for some influential group or organization, the name of which Caitlin does not reveal. In the meeting, as expected, Mullins and his two other associates were sitting there, all greeted up to grill Joe, Caitlin, Kyle, and Byron. They were asked about the extraction and what had happened in San Antonio. The only reason Joe and her team were still out there was that they had secured a huge win by putting down the terrorist and saving the city from potential bombings. Byron knew that being successful in their mission was the only way they could come out of the mess that Kyle and Joe had created. Byron was an experienced campaigner, and he had foreseen this day a long time ago. Mullins asked Kyle to leave and then asked them what was happening with the entire Amrohi case. Mullins knew about it, and they were curious to know what was at stake and how Joe and her team were planning to execute the mission. Joe told them that this was the furthest they had ever gone, and if things went the way they wanted, Amrohi would be dead soon. In their conversations, in episode 6, it came out that Joe knew that there might be a possibility that Cruz wouldn't come out of the mission alive. Joe felt the guilt of pushing a young girl towards her own doom, but she was ready to live with it, provided they were successful in their mission. Joe told Mullen that they were planning to launch a missile during Aaliyah's wedding and take out the terrorist. Mullins made it very clear that, in light of the recent events, the team had to report directly to them and keep them in the loop. Joe was told that the operation would be called Yellow Jacket and that the authorization code to launch the missile would be Mabel. Joe, Caitlin, and Byron were not happy about their independence being snatched, but they also knew that it could have turned out to be much worse. Meanwhile, there was another problem that arose out of nowhere when three men broke into the house where Joe's men were putting up with the intention of committing a robbery. Those thieves committed the biggest mistake of their lives, and soon they were taken into custody by Joe's men. Joe asked Kyle to go and resolve the issue and make sure that nobody comes to know about it and that the identity of her man doesn't come to light. Kyle settled the issue, and after an eventful day, Joe finally returned to her home. Joe had told Cruz that Aaliyah wanted to know her as a person and that she should play her cards very cautiously. Joe could only guide Cruz, but once she was in there, she had to trust her own intuition and do what she felt was best for her mission. Aaliyah wanted to pamper Joe and spend time with her, and she needed the entire day. They watched a couple of movies together, and that's when Cruz told Aaliyah that if she felt so trapped, she should tell her parents that she didn't want to get married. Aaliyah said that from where she came, things didn't happen like that. She said that her saying no would have the same effect on both families, and then, too, she wouldn't be left alone to live her life. Probably that's why Aaliyah made all sorts of random plans, as she felt like she wouldn't be able to do anything after her marriage. Aaliyah and Cruz lay close to each other on the bed, and there was something about the way they looked at each other. It felt as if Aaliyah genuinely liked Cruz, and the latter also felt something similar. The next day, Aaliyah told Cruz that her mother had called and that Mallorca had been chosen as the place for the wedding. Aaliyah, in her excitement, came close to Cruz and very unexpectedly kissed her. It felt like it was long overdue, and the two girls got intimate with each other for a brief moment. But just then, something snapped inside Cruz, and she stopped, making it very awkward for Aaliyah. In the end, left Cruz feeling conflicted from within. For a moment, she forgot she was on a mission. She liked Aaliyah, even if she wasn't embracing that fact. Aaliyah was genuinely sweet to her, and nobody cared for her the way she had in the past few days. We are very sure that Cruz will try her level best not to let Aaliyah die there. Cruz didn't know what love was, and now that she had a person who treated her the way she deserved, she had to literally push her to her death. It won't be easy for Cruz from Huron, and she has a lot of thinking to do about the kind of path she wants to choose. Joe, Caitlin, and Byron Westfield knew the kind of risk they were taking and how much was at stake. There were times when they felt that they were not prepared for the mission, but it was too late to take a step back. Byron Westfield was getting paranoid because he knew that they would be answerable to senators, and any mishap on their part wouldn't go unnoticed. He asked Joe if they could abort the mission, but she told him that Cruz was already on the move, and aborting the mission meant compromising with the lioness. Westfield asked Caitlin to be on the ground with the entire team because he knew there was no scope for a mistake. Meanwhile, Joe was informed by Bobby that Cruz and Aaliyah were on the move and the team had no clue where they were headed. Joe asked her team to reach the base, and then she called Kyle and asked him to track Cruz and Aaliyah. Joe went back to her home after that, as she wanted to spend some time with her family before leaving for her mission. The mission was going to last for approximately seven days, and Joe, until now, hadn't informed Kate about it. 
Kate had been finally discharged from the hospital, and she was happy to be able to come back home. Joe knew that Kate needed her to be around, and that is why she didn't know how to tell her that she was not going to be there for a week. Kate lost her cool when she got to know that Joe was leaving, and she asked Joe how she would do her daily chores without her. Joe told her that she had kept a nurse as of now who would help her with everything. Kate knew that her mother wouldn't have left her unless and until something very important came up. The girl very innocently asked her mother if it was a dangerous mission that she was going on, and Joe couldn't lie to her this time. Joe told her that the mission was dangerous and that there was a possibility that she wouldn't be able to make it out alive. Kate, at that moment, just wanted to hug her mother and not let her go. She felt helpless, and so did Joe, but they didn't have an option as of now. Joe was proud of her daughter's precocity, and she told Neil later that after the mission, she was going to opt for a desk job in her department. Joe loved being in the field, but leaving her daughter like this and not being able to be around when she needed her the most killed her from within. Neil knew about it, and that is why he asked Joe to think about it after the mission was over, but Joe was adamant, and she said that she had already made up her mind. With a heavy heart, Joe bid adieu to her family, not knowing if she would be able to see them again or not. We realized in the previous episode that Cruz was in that kind of mental space where she had started feeling that whatever she was doing was not ethically right. Moreover, Cruz and Aaliyah shared an intimate moment, and after that, everything changed. Cruz had fallen for Aaliyah, and after being in denial and resisting the feeling for quite some time, in the seventh episode, she finally accepted that fact and gave in. Cruz and Aaliyah, after shopping, went to an apartment and made love to each other. Cruz broke down after that, as her conscience felt burdened with the guilt of deceiving the only person who had actually loved her. Cruz messaged Joe and told her that she couldn't do this any longer, and Joe immediately flew to the location as she knew that if she didn't talk to Cruz now, she might end up spoiling the entire plan. Kyle was staying a couple of floors below Aaliyah's apartment, and Joe asked Cruz to come there herself so that they could have a conversation. Joe told Cruz that Aaliyah just wanted to experience freedom one last time before she got caged in Riyadh. Joe reminded Cruz that right now, she might be feeling that she was betraying her friend by getting her father killed, but in reality, she was actually doing a noble job and saving the lives of hundreds of people. She told Cruz that it was Amrohai's black money that funded the terrorist activities throughout the globe, and his death would deal a huge blow to each and every terrorist organization. Joe even gave Cruz videos of terrorist attacks that had been funded by Amrohai's money and asked her to watch them so that she realized that she was not doing something ethically wrong. During episode 7 ending, Cruz agreed to everything except the fact that Aaliyah was just playing around with her. Cruz had seen it in Aaliyah's eyes, and she knew that she was not faking it. The way Aaliyah held her, the way she pampered her, and the way she adored her had brought about a change in Cruz, and she told Joe that she was not trained to face such conflicts. Cruz had faced a lot of difficulties in her life, but this one was probably the most grueling and toughest of them all. Cruz, on the other hand, didn't know what she was doing or why she was consenting to go through such hell. To top it all, Cruz had fallen in love with Aaliyah, and she didn't know how she was going to execute her father when the time came. Joe had told Cruz time and again that Aaliyah was using her and that she just wanted to have some fun and take full advantage of her freedom before she got married, but deep down, Cruz knew that it was not the truth. Cruz trusted Aaliyah with all her heart. They had fallen in love with each other, and Cruz didn't know how to take her feelings out of the equation now. Cruz felt a certain way, and no matter what Joe told her, she was not going to believe that her intuitions were not telling her the truth. Joe had a conversation with Cruz when she felt that the latter was having second thoughts about going on the mission. Joe made her realize that people like Amrohai didn't deserve to live and that she was doing the right thing by killing him. But something inside Cruz told her that it was not right and that for betraying the trust of someone so badly, she would have to pay a huge cost, maybe not in the present but eventually in the future. So, let's find out if Cruz was able to execute the mission successfully or if her feelings got in the way of her duty and created a problem for the CIA and the United States of America. Cruz reached Mallorca, and she was immediately taken to Essan, as apparently he wanted to have a conversation with her. Essan asked Cruz why the other day she had left crying from Aaliyah's room, and he suspected that something might have happened between them. Cruz told her that Aaliyah was scared because everything in her life was going to change after the wedding, but Essan didn't buy that. He knew that both ladies were up to something and that they were hiding things from him. Essan became so agitated that he raised his hands on Cruz and told her that it was the last time she would meet Aaliyah, and after her wedding, she wouldn't get to see her ever again. Cruz never told Aaliyah that Essan had confronted her, and she knew there was no point in doing so. Later, Aaliyah told Cruz that Essan had an idea that they were having an affair and that once she married him, 
her entire life would change completely. Aliyah was feeling apprehensive about her future married life, but she was helpless, and she knew that she wouldn't be able to do anything even if she wanted to. Cruz told her time and again to rebel and speak up for her own cause, but Aliyah knew that it was not a possibility as she was well aware of the kind of men her father and fiancé were. She told Cruz that she didn't agree that her father was a terrorist, as the Western nations had labeled him to be, but obviously, she was too naive and too in her cocoon to understand what happened behind the curtain and the kind of complex and dirty politics nations indulged in. Cruz, while talking to Aliyah, realized that Amrohai had already arrived at the wedding venue, and she geared up to take action and do whatever was in her hands to kill the man and bring this nightmare of a mission to an end. Aliyah came to Cruz's bedroom once again in the night, and she made it very clear that she wanted to get close to her forbidden love. She had just this one night, and after that, she was never going to see Cruz. She wanted to take full advantage of the time she had on her hands, and she wanted the night to last for an eternity. But things didn't happen as she had planned, and Cruz decided that she didn't want to indulge her in any manner because, as it was, she was feeling very guilty. Cruz loved her, and she told her that, and that is why she didn't want to hurt her anymore. Cruz went down to the kitchen, and that's when, out of nowhere, Amrohai arrived there and had a conversation with her. Meanwhile, Esan got to know that Cruz was a marine, and he realized that his intuitions were actually true. He rushed to the kitchen, but before he could do anything, Cruz stabbed him, then turned to Amrohai and slit his throat in cold blood. Aliyah came to the scene, and seeing her father and her fiancé lying in the pool of blood, she shouted at the top of her lungs. The guards came running to her, but till then Cruz had escaped. Joe and her team had already reached Fortaleza estate, and they started giving cover fire to Cruz. Cruz somehow managed to escape from there while dodging the bullets and leaving things to fate. Joe and her soldiers killed everyone who came their way, and they successfully escaped from there in their yacht. Amrohai was dead, and the CIA had accomplished their mission, but the battle was still not over. During special ops ending, Cruz lost her control and went into a fit of rage as she blamed Joe for turning her into a killing machine and making her hurt someone she loved with all her heart. Now she knew that she could never go back to Aaliyah even if she wanted to, and moreover, she knew how shattered it would have made her when she would have gotten to know that whatever time she had spent with Cruz was all a lie. The Secretary of State, Edwin Mullins, and his team had told Byron time and again to call off the mission because they realized that by killing Amrohai, they would be putting their relations with the entire Middle East in jeopardy. But it was way too late by the time they came to that realization. They asked Byron to call off the mission and ask his team to retreat, but Cruz had already reached the venue, and there was no way they could contact her and tell her to abort the mission. Nobody but the government was to be blamed for the indecisiveness, and as Byron said, they shouldn't have put Amrohai on the most wanted list if they didn't want him to be killed by the CIA. Nonetheless, the damage had been done, and Cruz told Joe that she was not going to be a part of this system as it had done nothing but wreck her from within. She had lost a lot in the process, and in the end, she came to know that it all amounted to nothing. The bureaucratic procedures were a mess, and the leaders should have been more in sync and reached a conclusion prior to giving the green light to the mission. Probably in the future, Russia and China would both get involved in the issue, as Amrohai used to deal with them, too. The oil prices were affected, and now the field was open for others to take advantage of the situation. If there will be a special ops, Lioness Season 2, we will get to witness the repercussions of what had happened in Majorca, and surely the CIA had triggered a chain reaction that was going to face a lot of problems for them in the times to come. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and I hope you enjoyed the episodes of Special Ops Lioness. We will meet in the next video.